Good morning and welcome to Falls Baptist Church. It is great to see you here this morning on this uh, fine summer day. Psalm 24 uh, includes these wonderful words. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. And today we want to lift our eyes just from the, the mundane things of life, uh, the, the cares of this world, and get our eyes on the King this morning and praise him. Can we do that? Let's take our hymn books this morning, the blue hymn book, and turn to hymn number one as we sing the familiar song, O oh, Worship the King. And I trust you'll let the words of this text stir your heart of who our God is. We have the incredible privilege of being children of the King. And so let's, let's stand together now and sing number one, O oh, Worship the King. these words, frail children of dust and feeble as frail. And isn't that who we are? Well, we are just feeble people. When we compare ourselves to who our God is, we are nothing. But it says, we being frail and needy and feeble, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. He will never fail us. What a wonderful king we serve, one who will never let us down. Let's sing that forth together. Frail children of dust and Just a few pages there in that same book to number six as we sing, Come Thou Almighty King. And uh, this, another just wonderful hymn, lifting up who our God is, many different attributes of God that we see here. So meditate on those as we sing this together. Number six, Come Thou Almighty King.
this dark world, the world needs to see Jesus, and God has made it to where we as believers are those that show forth his reality. And you can think of a number of ways that we show it forth, but did you know there's one way that sometimes we forget that may be the most obvious, and that is the joy of the Lord. How important it is that we have that. So let's ask God to give that to us today. Lord, I pray that we'll understand what you want to do in our heart, in our spirit, so that your very presence can be manifest through our face, our life, everything about us. Lord, thank you for the great privilege of having your very own joy. And Lord, would you help us to understand our own responses, and Lord, give victory this morning in this important area, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Continue to praise the Lord. Take your songbook now, that brown songbook, and turn to number 86 in the songbook. We're going to sing, How Majestic is Thy Name. And certainly we can consider who our God is. Really, our response needs to be one of just worship and adoration, saying, what an amazing, infinite, indescribable God that we truly have. Let's stand together as we sing number 86, How Majestic is Thy Name.
singing, you may be seated. The ushers have come forward and they have this week's bulletin. If you did not receive one of those on your way in, as they move to the back, you just indicate them by an upraised hand or just a, just an, a nod and they will get that to you. And uh, that has information about what's gonna be going on uh, here over these next weeks at our church. Also, you'll find a connection card. And if you do us a, a favor as you take that connection card and fill that out for us, if it's your first time here, or if you're a regular attender, a regular member here at our church and you have a prayer request to share, there's sign-ups there as well. And so take time to look over that connection card and fill that out and you can place that in the offering plate as it comes by or take it to guest services in the back. And if you are visiting here with us today, we certainly are glad to have you here this morning. And uh, great to see everyone today. And if this is your first time here, or perhaps your first time in a very long time with us, uh, we'd love to have you just invite you to stop by and greet pastor after the service out in the welcome area here. And we have a gift, a gift there for you as well. And we'd love to have that and give that to you uh, as a token of just gratitude for you being here with us today. So thank you so much for coming. Well, we are thankful to see each one of you today and excited about the Lord's goodness, and I trust you are too. Uh, we do want to praise the Lord for a week ago, our uh, Vacation Bible School, The Big Dig, and we told you a little bit about it, but you can see there in the bulletin uh, what a tremendous answer to prayer and victory that was, especially in light of uh, some of the, uh, the real difficulties that uh, we were going through with the tragedy that occurred, and the Lord just worked. We had a high day of nearly 180, uh, sorry, 850, 850, including the teen outreach. And what was exciting, um, this doesn't count all of the outside families that were here, but we had 104 new families that came this year, and that is a tremendous thing. We had nearly 100 people tr um, trust Christ as Savior, and on the finale, we had over 500 attend, and God just worked in a just amazing way. And God's been working, folks, uh, came, uh, have been helped this week, and I do want to encourage you now, tomorrow night is follow-up, and I would encourage you to plan to be here at 630. A lot of folks we'd like to just thank for being here and be able to be a blessing and a help to them. So a lot more work to be done. It's a very key time right now for us to, uh, to take this time, and uh, remember we have nursery and all at 630, so I encourage you to be here as we look forward uh, to continuing to reach out. But we do praise the Lord for His goodness to us. Well, coming up, we have a number of things right here in the month of August. A week from tomorrow night is our Men and Boys Cookout. You'll see a sign up for that on uh, the back of the connection card. And uh, we in, uh, encourage you uh, to come and uh, bring your, the boys with you. Uh, we'll have a full program plan, 4 o'clock uh, on to dusk. We'll eat around 5 o'clock. You can see the cost there and what to bring. And so if you'll just sign up there, it's always a great time of fellowship. And this will be at Willowwood Park, not Rotary Park where we normally are, but Willowwood Park, which really gives us even more opportunities for things uh, to be done as far as sports and so forth. So we'll look forward to that a week from Monday night. And uh, we do have also Spectacular Music Camp begins next Monday. And you can see on the back of the connection card, if you are interested in having your child part of this, this is a time, if you're going to get your child into the music program or want to see them developed in all ages, this is the time to check up on that. And if you'd like to help also, if you'd indicate that, we could certainly use help as we'll have folks from across the country here for this exciting camp. And that will start a week from Monday. Well, next Sunday is Complete the Vision uh, Sacrifice Offering Sunday. And periodically we have something like this as God's people band together uh, to really do what uh, uh, is above what uh, we can do on a normal basis uh, with our operation here. As you have seen already, our parking lot was torn up, but it is getting more and more torn up as we are uh, preparing to have it uh, repaved in a couple of weeks. And uh, the concrete work went in. Thank you for your cooperation this week. Um, but uh, this is a very major project. And so we're asking God to help us uh, be able to cover part of it. We're able to cover part of it as a church, but this is going to be vital for us to all band together. And if you're part of our church family, you did receive the 
a hardcover plus the email about what the project fully entailed and just how it works. And then you also got a letter and an envelope that is both for a cash offering and for commitment. Make sure you look at that envelope very carefully. If you are uh, attending here but feel part of Falls Baptist Church and many times uh, folks that are are part of the church that way uh, make a big difference in these kinds of offerings. We have the material at guest services and we would encourage you to go by if God's touching your heart uh, about this. But we are going, this is a sacrifice offering and uh, I do want to encourage you to pray what the Lord would have you to do. And I have found for me it always goes beyond what is comfortable. And, uh, but God blesses. This is, how, this is how a church goes forward. This is how our church has gone forward. And I just thank the Lord for your constant giving. But if everyone is willing to equally sacrifice, not equally give, we all do something different, but if we're willing to equally sacrifice, God will meet the lead, need. Our, um, uh, our victory goal is $50,000. Our challenge goal is $75,000. And our hallelujah goal is uh, $100,000. And our hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah goal is uh, $265,000. That could happen, folks. Now, I mean, even $50,000 is a pretty major offering. I realize that. Uh, but the uh, uh, Lord may put it on someone's heart right at this point to do something major. And uh, and just whatever God would have you to do, that is the key. Now in the letter, let me, I mentioned this on Wednesday night, it said that we were going to be replacing the partitions in the fellowship hall. And that was something else that was going to come out of our reserve fund. And uh, well, as you know, we have uh, Uh, Our air conditioner in this building is half down. It's doing fine today for what we need. But um, that has to be replaced. And our men were able to actually fix those doors. They're safe and functional. Not extremely beautiful, but uh, they can last for a little while. So we're trading off getting this done and then we'll do that later. So I just want to be accurate with you so that you know that was a decision made by our deacons uh, last week that we needed to move forward with the air conditioning rather than the doors fully agreed. And I was just thrilled to death. They were able to fix that. So uh, we will uh, just do this a step at a time. But you can see it's very crucial that we have just a miracle offering a week from today. So if you have any questions about that, please let us know. But I would encourage you to really be praying. It'll be exciting. It'll be great to get this outside project done. And it's going to be a lot of work then to fix everything up and make it all click. But uh, appreciate uh, your prayer about that. Also, I didn't mention with the Spectacular Music Camp, do note the concerts that will be a week from now. And uh, all of these are really a blessing. And I would encourage you, we'll say more as we get right up on it. But uh, each of these, it's an encouragement to have you here for those. And uh, we'll look forward to that. We're going to be having after the service on the 21st, we're going to have an early service at 5 o'clock. Let me just put it in your minds. We're going to do a hospitality again, but this time it will not be by Sunday school fellowships. We're going to just do upset the, uh, whatever they call it. Uh, Anyway, mix everybody up. And so get you with folks maybe you've not really had a chance to meet. And we'll just have a good evening uh, there on that day. So that's coming on August the 21st. Uh, do uh, also want to have you put a date in your mind, August the 14th, that's two weeks from tonight, Edgar Figali, you may have seen his book in the bookstore, he has an amazing testimony out of Lebanon, and uh, I mean, he was actually uh, felt the force of a bomb during the Lebanese-Israeli war and so forth, and he has had an amazing ministry both in Lebanon and in the Middle East, and he will be here for the evening service on the 14th. So you'll want to plan ahead. That's unusual to be able to have him, and uh, you will very much be challenged and encouraged uh, by his message 
um, two weeks from tonight. Tonight we continue on our Exodus series and we're on the ninth commandment tonight. I trust you can be here. And then let me just take a moment here on the Disciple You Life Transformation Tracks. We have four Sundays coming up here where we'll be having three choices and all three choices I believe can be a great help to you. I'll be uh, continuing on our, facul- our f- uh, family track, developing relationships with your children, zeroing in. I always cover that one way or the other, but I'm going to spend four weeks camping out on it, especially in the younger middle years, which are vital. And then staff members will be tackling the tough issues of the day, four very, very uh, key uh, Uh, matters where we need answers on these, and uh, it will be a great help. And then the prophecies of Daniel, Mr. Himes is going to be uh, teaching that. And so, three very up-to-date courses, the prophecies of Daniel will open up what's going on today. So, really there's something for everyone. I encourage you right here at the end of the summer, uh, make that a top priority uh, today. And I know you will be thankful for that opportunity. And then last but not least, we have a wedding this week. Uh, Josh Coleman, who works here on our staff, we thank the Lord for him, and Cherie Forrester, the youngest of the Forrester clan, are going to be uh, married uh, at 4 p.m. with the prelude beginning at 3.30, a light reception afterwards. So we certainly invite you for this very, very special occasion. The entire church is invited. All right, for it being the quiet part of the summer, that's not very quiet. We got some things going on here, so uh, do encourage you to take part in what will be a blessing to you. Ushers, come. Let's take our offering here this morning. Let's stand for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you are so, uh, as we've been singing, uh, great, majestic, and so loving, the great almighty sovereign God cares about each one of us. Lord, we rejoice in that. And Lord, I pray that each of us will be encouraged by who you are and what your word says so clearly. Now, Lord, in this matter of the offering, would you continue to work? Lord, these have been some miracle years in just regular giving. And Lord, we're able to do some things right now because these dear folks have been faithful. Lord, may we not at all falter in our giving. Uh, Give us grace. Would you bless the offering next week? Lord, You're going to have to work, Uh, but Lord, you've always been good to meet our needs here. So, Lord, work in all of our hearts. I pray you'll bless today uh, in all that is done. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Thank you for that. Take your hymn books now once again and go to 275. And here as we think about just praising the king and giving our eyes on the king, we find a song that takes a little bit different uh, perspective on that reality. And here we see that I belong to the king. You know, the glory of our relationship with God is not just that we are God's subjects, though we certainly could say that and that would be, that would be right. But as this, this song so well points out, we are the child of the king. And that's an incredible relationship that we can have with him. And we're going to sing about that. Before we do that, I want to just point out one thing that this song does that's a little bit different than a lot of our hymns, just so you can follow along and not be confused. At the very end of the song, you'll notice it says, that it kind of looks like it should keep on going, and it does. There's a, it's, it says DS there, and then the words for the last part of the chorus are underneath a little earlier in the song, if you see that. So I just want to make sure that's clear for you if you're not familiar with how that that music is sometimes written that way so we can follow along and you know what everybody else is singing. So let's stand together as we sing this final song, 275, I Belong to the King. I belong to the King, I'm a child of Unceasingly mine, wheresoever I go, and my refuge unfailing is He. I belong to the King, I'm a child of His love, and He never forsaketh His own. He will call me someday. I shall dwell by his glorified throne. On the last together. I belong to the king and his promise assured that we all shall be gathered at last. In his kingdom above, my life's waters so pure when this life with its singing, you may be seated. Deep in my heart there's a gladness, Jesus has saved me from sin. Praise to his name, what a Savior, dwelling from sin and sin. Why do I sing about Jesus? Why is he precious to me? He is my Lord and my Savior. Dying, he set me free. Only a glimpse of his goodness 
that was sufficient for me. Only one look at the Savior, then was my spirit set free. He is the fairest of fair ones, He is the lily, the rose. Rivers of mercy surround him, grace, love, and pity he shows. Why do I sing about Jesus? Why is he precious to me? He is my Lord and my Savior. Dying, he set me free. Dying, he set me free. The joy of the Lord, what a wonderful part of the Christian life. And as we are in our rekindling series, rekindling our passion, I thought it would be good to touch on this important part of what it looks like when you actually have the zeal of the Lord, when you are walking in that right relationship with Him. You know, when I was growing up, the thing that attracted me to Bible Christianity, as I was surrounded with it, was the joy of the Lord in godly Christians. And there was just an obvious difference, and as a pastor's kid, I, I saw it, I knew it, and I could see genuine Christianity, and I saw enough of it to really strengthen my faith. And it is, it's, has an enormous impact. Many years ago, this uh, well-known illustration of, or an incident in the life of Adoniram Judson um, occurred. He was home on furlough, and as you know, Adoniram Judson went through some great heart, heartache, losing a couple of wives uh, in death there on the field and children and uh, imprisoned and went through many things, but he walked with God and opened up Burma, present-day Myanmar, to the gospel, and an enormous number of people have come to Christ over the years. He was passing through the city of Stonington, Connecticut, and a young boy was playing around on the wharfs at, uh, wharfs at that time and was struck by Judson's appearance. Never before had he seen such a light, such a joy on the face of any human being. He ran up the street to a pastor to ask if he knew who the stranger was. The pastor hurried back with him, but became so absorbed in conversation with Aaron Iram Judson that he forgot all about the impatient youngster standing near him. Well, many years afterward, that boy who could not get over what he saw in the life of Aaron Iram Judson, he learned about who it was. He became himself a mightily used preacher of God. His name was Henry Clay Trumbull. And he, in his book of memoirs, he penned a chapter entitled, What a Boy Saw in the Face of Adoniram Judson. That lighted, joyful countenance changed his life. And it's very interesting. Many of you know the name Elizabeth Elliot. She is the great-great-granddaughter of Henry Clay Trumbull. Listen, folks. The joy of the Lord in our life in just one incident can change generations. It is a big part of our walk with God. You know, it's interesting as you think about uh, the two shortest verses in the English in the Bible. If you were to ask someone what is the shortest verse, you'd say, well, that's Jesus wept. And uh, there in John, and uh, yes, in the English, that is the shortest, when he wept at the grave of Lazarus. But in the Greek, there is one that is shorter than that, and that is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, rejoice evermore. And I thought about the fact because Jesus wept and had compassion for us, we can rejoice evermore. Jim C. Smith, the great evangelist who came out of a poverty-stricken background as a gypsy there in Europe, was always joyful. 
And he was asked how he was able to consistently stay strong and fresh and have the joy of the Lord. He said, I've never lost the wonder of it all. Folks, this is the badge of a believer. This is part of what it means to live with Christ, to have the joy of the Lord. And by the way, even medical science will tell you having the right kind of attitude and laughter in particular makes a huge amount of difference. Uh, the effect of laughter on a human being uh, has a profound and instantaneous effect on virtually every important organ in the human body. It reduces health sapping tensions and relaxes the tissues as well as exercising the most vital organs. It said that laughter, even when forced, results in beneficial effect on us both mentally and physically. So the next time they say you feel nervous and jittery, indulge in a good laugh. Well, that's human perspective. The next time you feel nervous and jittery, go to God and learn about the joy of the Lord. Turn with me to a familiar passage, Philippians chapter 4, please. Philippians chapter 4. And we're going to just zero in on rekindling our joy, looking at the importance of joy in the life of every believer. Philippians chapter 4 is part of the book that uh, the Apostle Paul, under inspiration, wrote to the good people of Philippi. Uh, they had experienced great revival there in Macedonia. And uh, he was writing to them out of prison. He was in Rome and he was in prison. And yet one of the themes of this great book is joy. In fact, uh, the mind of Christ thinking right really dominates this entire book. And it's understanding a number of things about what Christ did for us, having his mind and so forth. But we read in chapter 4 the importance of uh, having a uh, proper perspective on life. And we read in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. First of all, we need to see here this is a command. Simple. The command of God. And so we need to realize that God wants us to be joyful. You know, I always bring this up every time I speak on it. But, you know, it's amazing how people want us to think that God has told us to be miserable. That if you come to know the Lord or if you serve the Lord, it's just going to be the pits, right? Isn't that what Satan whispers in your ear? Well, one of the great commands of Scripture is that we are to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, he says it, I say rejoice. And even though Paul was the human author, who is the actual author of every part of the Word of God? It is the mighty Spirit of God. This is from God. And so this matter of having joy is not an option. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, you need to get this this morning. If you came in and uh, you're, you got a cloud and it's raining on you, you even though it's really beautiful outside. You need to really listen here this morning because God is telling you He wants you to have His joy. Uh, rejoice in the Lord. In fact, we need to understand that God is displeased when we do not have joy because that's one of the great clear indications that we do not have freedom in our relationship with Him. And that there is not the reality of his life and who he is and what he has done and what he has for us to do. And so therefore we're bottled up in ourselves, we're, we're listening to the wrong voices, we're doing the wrong thing. And that darkness is not of him. Satan isn't being able to control because we're living in the flesh. And so therefore it is a very major concern and sadness to the Lord. I've uh, mentioned before how George Mueller, as A.W. Tozer talks about, would not preach until his heart was happy, joyful in the grace of God. And it was the Moravian Christians there in, in London that had the joy of the Lord that just struck uh, John Wesley. John Wesley was trying to earn heaven through his 
good works and his methodology. He was the father of Methodism. Well, unfortunately, he was looking to methods for a relationship with the Lord. And uh, he was discouraged about it because that wasn't what the Bible taught. And when he saw their joy and then heard just read about justification by faith, that's there at Altar's Gate, that's how John Wesley came to know the Lord. And so A.W. Tozer says, based upon that and other illustrations that he gives, the Christian owes it to the world to be supernaturally joyful. Now, in our worship of the Lord, privately and corporately, like we are today, joy should be part of it. <clears throat> now, not emotional enthusiasm. Now, that can come, and that's fine, but we don't try to work that up. Did you know that you can be emotionally enthusiastic or even be somewhat humanly happy but not have real joy? And there's a lot of substitute. The world has raucous laughter. The world has... Uh, comedians. The world has emotional highs when the Green Bay Packers score in the last minute and win the game. Everybody thinks that is joy. Well, that begins to fade after a while, after they lose the next game, you know, or whatever happens, or they don't make it to the Super Bowl. I mean, all of that short-lived, but the joy of the Lord is much deeper and is not human. It is divine, as we're going to see. And so there ought to be, as we come to the Lord, a deep joy in our hearts. Deuteronomy 26, 11, And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee, and unto thine house, thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. Everything that God has given, he said to Israel, to you, and all that he's allowed you to have in worshiping, first at the tabernacle, and then at the temple, ought to cause there to be great rejoicing. Second Chronicles 6, again talking about worship at the temple, verse 41, Now therefore arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength, speaking of the Holy of Holies. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness." You see, any time we spend time with the Lord individually, any time we spend the Lord, time with the Lord here together as God's people, it should, we should have hearts that are so open that the joy of the Lord marks that time. That's why people work so hard to have an emotional high in the service. You cannot fake it, folks, and you can't work it up. It comes from the Holy Spirit doing the work because our hearts are truly worshiping Him. Psalm 68, 3, but let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Well, that's rather filled with joy, isn't it, that, uh, that verse. And again, do you notice the imperative here? We as believers need to be glad. We need to rejoice. We need to exceeding rejoice. When was the last time you've just been thrilled about your salvation? Does it dominate your life? Are you filled with joy right now? You say, well, pastor, I got some real issues. It doesn't give a condition. The joy of the Lord should be part of your life. Did you know the joy of the Lord can be with you during the deepest of trials? We'll see that in a minute. We've certainly experienced that because it's of God and not of us. Psalm 97, 1, the Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Just yesterday as I was studying, just watching and hearing the birds, you know, and uh, just seeing all of God's creation, you just sense they rejoice. They are just aware in their simple uh, animal existence, uh, uh, creature existence of God. They just simply have a song. I noticed one bird, I'm, I'm not uh, real good on which birds are which. Has it been me or have there been different species than normal around this year? I don't know, maybe it's just our backyard. Anyway, uh, but this one little bird, it would soar high and be quiet. And then when it got down low, it'd start chirping. And then it would go high, which is funny, it would go like this. Maybe you know what bird that is. And I thought, you know, um, we certainly want to chirp when, when we go high. But you know, the way to solve being low is... Rejoice. 
That was sort of a forced illustration. But anyway, it's what I thought, that's what I thought about yesterday when I, when I saw that. I thought, well, oh, that bird's got it right. Anytime you dip down, chirp. Well, not exactly to do that, but rejoice and have the joy of the Lord. And so, in the command, though, it's also continual in every believer. It's not only expected, but it ought to be all the time. Now, this is the catch, okay? Oh, we have times when we remember our salvation. There are times when we see God work. There are times when we yield to Him. And that joy comes into our heart when we take a step of faith. But the key to really pleasing God is to have that joy continually. Uh, did you know that you can? That's why godly Christians, they don't want to go back to any kind of up and down Christianity. Christians that have a steady walk with God experience that glorious, deep, quiet reality of the joy of the Lord. I already mentioned 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, the shortest verse. Rejoice, how much? Evermore. Look back at your text here that we started out with here on this topical study of joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. Okay? So, very clearly, God doesn't want us just to rejoice when we have something to be thankful about. We certainly should then. But it ought to be part of our life. You ought to get up with the joy of the Lord. You ought to go to bed with the joy of the Lord. You ought to be uh, very much uh, having that joy all the way through your day. In fact, uh, being filled with the Spirit there in Ephesians chapter 5, you have the very first thing that after verse 18 that evidences the filling of the Spirit is that matter of singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. There just ought to be a song on your heart when you are really walking with God. Again, the Lord knows that. Billy Sunday, that old uh, converted uh, uh, baseball player uh, turned into quite an evangelist said, if you have no joy in your religion, there's a leak in your Christianity somewhere. <laughs> you had a way of saying things, but that is true. Something is wrong. Well, it is the Spirit of God, folks, that gives us joy. It isn't something we work up. It is not circumstances, praise the Lord. Uh, it is not, there's not some little formula to it. It's a person. Remember, your salvation is based on a person. Jesus saved you. And your joy is based on a person. Jesus uh, it went to the right hand of the Father. The Father gave the promise of the Spirit to us at, uh, at Pentecost and now to every believer at salvation. So the person of the Holy Spirit indwells you. And did you know that the Holy Spirit is filled with joy all the time? So every moment you are yielded to the Spirit, you not only have happiness humanly, that's all we can have. You have deep in your spirit joy that has divine origin that is not deterred by circumstances. Now, I'll tell you folks, listen, the clear proof to a lost world of the salvation of someone is in the midst of when there should be the opposite reaction, there is still joy. I was asked right out here on this parking lot several times, why does your congregation have such a good attitude? Well, that was a great question. <laughs> it's because they know the Lord. It is the Lord uh, through those difficult times. And so it needs to be continual. First uh, Chronicles 16.10, Glory ye in His holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Old and New Testament, we need to be continually filled with joy. Now let me just ask you, let's be honest this morning, does that mark our lives? You know, it's nice to hear a message on joy, but frankly, a message on joy, I know for me, can be one of the most convicting messages, because it is a very clear indicator of where we are in our spiritual walk with the Lord. And that leads me to point number two. Simply, it's not only a command uh, given by God, but a decision of the will. We have to choose whether or not we will have joy. A pastor tells about being in an airliner some years ago, and uh, this was back in the old prop planes. 
And those of you that were back in that era, when you hit a storm, it wasn't fun. And sometimes they couldn't fly over a storm. And I remember some not so good moments uh, in those airliners back when I was very young, I want you to know. Anyway, and uh, they were in a large airliner and there was severe wind and rainstorm. And, uh, and despite the size of the plane and its tremendous power of its motors, uh, propellers, it was being tossed violently. Well, a little nine-year-old boy was sitting right next to the pastor. And uh, it was his first experience in the air. And of course, he, like a lot of adults probably, was desperately afraid. He suddenly looked up at the pastor and said, are you afraid? I smiled and replied, no, this is really fun. Immediately, a change came over the little fellow. Fear and tension le left him, and he too had fun riding up and down. Total change of attitude. That's a human decision, okay, based upon a human perspective. But you know, God does it in a supernatural way. How we view storms, how we view circumstances, how we view situations in life, or just life in general, we have to make a decision. Are we going to walk by faith and view it biblically from a spiritual standpoint, or are we going to continue to be uh, reactive and a victim of circumstances and allowing those emotions to come uh, based upon the storm around us? Now, that's a big question. So let's look at this. The decision of the will is a step of faith, not just a human decision like that illustration. It starts at salvation. Now, my friends, I can talk here all, all I want to about the need to have joy, but if you've never come into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you cannot have divine joy. You say, wow, that's a strong statement. Well, that's, that's a strong statement on purpose. Did you know that if you don't come into a personal saving faith with Christ, you will not have eternal joy in heaven. You will face the judgment of God in hell forever. That's a big deal. You will not have the righteousness of God. You will not have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And you will not have the ability to have joy in this life. Well, you may have a lot of happiness at times. You may have some sort of thrilling moments but those in the, leave you in the quiet moments of life. As the years tick off and as you begin to face reality, those human experiences do not meet the need. And so, my friends, uh, we don't have the ability in and of ourself to have joy. What do you mean by trusting the Lord? Well, what I mean is to depend wholly upon Him. You can't save yourself. I couldn't. We cannot be righteous enough for there is no sin in heaven. That's why Jesus, the creator of the heavens and the earth, had to come to this earth, become a man, live the perfect life that he did, die on the cross because he, the God-man, had to pay the price for my sins, which I could not pay. And he won the victory for me, and he won the victory for you, and he rose again. He is in heaven right now as our Savior. He is able to save you if you will come to him and not try to figure it out yourself, not try to do it yourself, not trust in human religion, but instead, based upon the Word of God, to trust in Christ alone. And the Bible says very clearly, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If you're counting on works at all, my friend, that's not real salvation. It is a miracle of God. And I say that strongly because this, this message will mean nothing to you really if you do not get a hold of the fact that the very way that you can have joy is it's the joy of the Lord. It's the actual salvation that you have and the very deep relationship that you will begin of eternal life with, with the Holy Spirit coming and indwelling you. And then you can have joy joy. Psalm 9, 14, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of, Sal of Zion. I will rejoice in what? Thy salvation. Psalm 51, 12, after David had sinned, he said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. All oh, life and joy begins when we come into a very real personal relationship when we're regenerated. Christian Worker was on a, a uh, train of soldiers that had been, went through the awful uh, 
Dunkirk experience. And he noticed one boy was just glowing. And uh, that, uh, that boy was just, he couldn't wait to get home to see his friends, his sweetheart. And that boy knew the Lord. Then he looked over and saw another one with an MP, his face dark, dejected. He was not looking forward to going home because he wasn't going home. He was going to prison and uh, didn't know anything about God. Now, that's a rather dramatic difference, but salvation makes all the difference. And uh, how are we going through life? A Gallup poll a few years ago uh, polled groups about happiness, and those that were the happiest, uh, and this was a secular poll, were those that had said that they had a personal relationship with Jesus. That was documented in a poll. The unhappiest were those that frequented taverns. So maybe that's why Milwaukee's not the happiest place at times. But anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, happiness comes as we know the Lord. And then it continues for us as believers through spirit filling. I've already alluded to this, but this is so important. Uh, Galatians 5, 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and you go on, uh, <clears throat> meekness, temperance against such, there is no law. Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans 15, 13, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. It's a divine matter. In believing, it's all based upon your faith in Him, that ye may abound, overflow in hope, a confident expectation through the power of the Holy Ghost. Do you see how joy and the Holy Ghost are connected in each of these passages? And oh, how important it is, even in the toughest times of life, James Guthrie, a Scottish pastor, went to the scaffold years or centuries ago because of his faith in Jesus. In telling his story, Jock Purvis writes, James Guthrie ever kept through his busy life his own personal fellowship with Christ in the fresh, joyous bloom of his new birth, as if he had been a young convert. I mean, he was a real man of prayer. Walking about on at 4 a.m. on the day he was to be executed, Guthrie spent time, as he always did, in personal worship and was asked by his friend James Cowie how he felt. Very well, replied Guthrie. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And he went to his martyrdom with joy. That could be repeated by the, uh, the thousands of people that have died for Christ. Say, how can that be? Because they have the real thing. They have eternal life. They have a relationship with the eternal God. And their joy is not based on circumstances. Fear and sorrow and bitterness and all those things can be overcome by God when we are fully yielded to Him. And that kind of joy can be a reality. So we must be yielded to the Holy Spirit. Folks, listen, what a foolish thing to hold on to things in our lives to live outside of the will of God, to allow distractions to come in and not really walk with God. What we then rob ourselves of and really rob many other people from seeing, and that is we're robbing ourselves from that which only God can give, the joy of the Lord. Why do you think Christian teenagers brought up in Christian homes are looking sometimes other places for excitement and happiness? It's because they are not experiencing the depth of the joy of the Lord because there's something in their life they haven't confessed to their parents, haven't gotten right. There were things that, uh, that they're holding and it just makes, and so they see their Christianity as something making them miserable by convicting them rather than it being the very source of what they're looking for. Anybody that fully gets right with God just is thrilled with that deep joy and purpose and meaning that God gives. And uh, so we got to understand, when we get saved, we still have the flesh. And uh, though we can have victory moment by moment, we can have continual joy, we still can get uh, sins, can come into our life, bitterness can come, anger therefore, depression, reactions, on and on it could go. 
And, uh, and so a believer who should have the joy of the Lord can have the same miserable perspective as the lost. The only thing that's different is they know they're saved and that they're going to heaven. But that's tragic. A Christian needs to be showing what God can do. So we've got to let God have our hearts. Third point, the final one here, this joy is developed through spiritual growth. Spirit, you notice, spiritual, the Holy Spirit's growth in our life. You see, the more we grow in knowledge, the more we develop, we then are constantly brought back to, I need to walk by faith. I need to yield to the Holy Spirit. Maturity is developing a regular response to God, hearing His voice, knowing His truth, yielded to Him, and so therefore joy becomes more continual. And it's simple, obeying God's Word. I mean, the joy of the Lord is found in knowing the very heart of God. I'm telling you, there's nothing like two when they're in God's will. They uh, come to a loving relationship, they get married, and there's something thrilling about knowing the innermost heart of the person that you love. There's real joy in that. Having the security of that relationship and communicating and opening your own heart and listening to their heart that joy is just a wonderful thing in the human re reality. And that's what it is about knowing the Word of God. Not resisting it, but embracing it. And we communicate with God, and we have the great joy of knowing His heart. Uh, we can't know the heart of God without the Word of God. Folks, you cannot learn about God through experience. You cannot learn about God through emotions. He is not going to be scientifically found. You must learn about Him through the Word of God, and then the Word of God will cause you to fellowship with Him, and your communication will be based upon the very secrets of His heart that He gives in His Word. Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by Thy name, O Lord God of hosts. John chapter 15, that great passage on having that relationship, abiding in Christ. Verse 11, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy. Whose joy? God's joy. Did you get that? Whose joy? God's joy. Not your worked up happiness. His joy might remain, continue abide. Listen, Jesus said, I'm sending the comforter, and if you are abiding in me, then you will have remaining, abiding in you, continual joy. That is the mark of a definite relationship. Do you see why the Lord's grieved if we don't have joy? You know, it's tragic. Christians walking around grousing and, uh, and discouraged and, and, uh, and have a negative attitude and, and and the Lord has done everything needful, and He's right there to even through our major trials that God allows to help develop us, He gives us joy and purpose all the time. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. It's not just there, but it's full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. And so our lives begin to operate when we are fellowshipping with God. All of a sudden, we're beginning uh, to function as we should. Ever been really sick? I mean, you just, uh, I mean, just sick and uh, whatever it was. And then you get better and better and better. And that day you wake up and you're really free from all those symptoms. <sighs> you know, that which you took for granted a little while before. It's just great to be normal, isn't it? Well, you see, we're sick when we're not right with God. We're just not functioning. We're hobbling around. We've got all kinds of issues. But when we yield to the Lord and let Him work, the joy of the Lord uh, comes because we're functioning as we ought to function. Isaiah 29, 19, the meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord. And the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. 
You remember when Ezra was teaching there the book of Nehemiah and he was, and all of the leaders were giving the word of God and all of a sudden hit the people and they were chagrined and broken at the horrible transgressions of Israel, how they had gone away from their God and they wept and they mourned. And then uh, Nehemiah says, for this day is holy unto the Lord, neither be ye sorry for the joy of the Lord is is your strength. Isn't that interesting? When, was, when were the people admonished to, to claim the joy of the Lord? When they had really gotten right with God. It was at that point they experienced God's joy. It's a wonderful thing. When uh, the people in Samaria came to full understanding of salvation, and remember many had come to know the Lord when Jesus was there just a, a couple of years before. You had the great uh, harvest there. And so uh, Acts 8.8 8 says, and there was great joy in that city. And so when we're fellowshipping with the Lord, Psalm 1611 says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Folks, is this true or not true? It is true. You'll never get around it. You will never find the wellspring of, uh, wellspring of joy. You will never find what you're really looking for. I'm talking to unbelievers and believers alike. You go down other pathways and you will miss that wonderful work of the Spirit of God giving you divine joy, opening your eyes and rekindling your passion for Him. C.H. Spurgeon has such a way with words. He says, holy joy will oil the wheels of your life's machinery. <laughs> holy joy will strengthen you for your daily labor. Holy joy will beautify you and give you an influence over the lives of others. How right he is. And one final thought about maturity, and that's trusting God in trials. God does have to work in our lives. He allows trials to come. When you're walking with Him, it's okay. When you're not walking with Him, you can misinterpret what's, what's going on. And um, many times it's a satanic attack, but God allows it. But God is endeavoring to grow us because we are so fleshly bound. And, uh, and so as you take steps of faith, you can just mark it down. There's going to be some issues. But James 1, 2, very familiar verse, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. When the trying of your faith comes, what are we supposed to do? Make the decision to let God work and the joy of the Lord will come. I'm telling you, it's a miraculous thing. I've, I've, I've faced some pretty heartbreaking situations. And of course, we just all recently have. But I'm telling you, when you make the decision, even though you're grieving terribly, there's joy in your heart. I'm here with you. I'm going to handle this. I know what I'm doing. It's just, it's just a, it's a miracle. See, people say, well, I, I need to see some miracles in my life. We'll just start living with joy and that's going to be a miracle. Instead of up and down and up and down and frustrated and irritated and, and hopeless at times, uh, continue to respond to the Lord and you'll have the miraculous joy of the Lord in your life that can only be explained because God did it. 1 Peter 1, 1.6, I want you to listen to these wonderful verses. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season it may be that ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Isn't that amazing? And Christians, right now, folks, we've got brothers and sisters that are in very difficult situations. You have no idea what they're going through in Myanmar, what they're going through in eastern Ukraine, what they're going through in North Korea what they're going through in many other places, Iran and so on. And yet, you go to those little gatherings, the joy of the Lord is there. It's not just joy. Folks, it would make every one of us get convicted. I was with 
the Russian believers in the underground church before the Iron Curtain fell. I have never experienced such joy and such meaning at the table of the Lord and at preaching like I did there behind the Iron Curtain. Folks, this is real. It's not just a nice idea. This is what our life ought to have. 1 Peter 4, 13, but rejoice, that decision of the will, insomuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Folks, God knows exactly what He's doing in our lives. And, uh, and God is going to he is going to meet every need we have, no matter what it is, if we will trust in Him. How's your joy meter this morning? <laughs> How real is it? I'm not talking about working up happy, happy, happy. I'm talking about deep joy. This is important. This is a key part of rekindling our passion for God. It's an indicator. It, you know, isn't that a wonderful commandment? We're to rejoice. We are to be joyful. That's God's will for us. Why don't you let him accomplish his will this morning? Let's bow for prayer. Heads are bowed this morning. How many here this morning would say, Pastor, there was a time in my life when I accepted Christ as my Savior, and I know I am saved. And when I think of what God's done for me, that brings joy, and I'm glad I'm saved, and I'm glad to give a testimony to the fact that I'm not depending on works or religion. I have no doubt in my heart. I am truly a child of God. And I just want to rejoice by, by sharing that with you by raising my hand. Would you just slip your, your hand for a moment? I know I am saved, and I'm glad to testify of that. All right, God bless you. You may put your hands down. Now, those of you that raised the hand, is that joy that you experience at salvation and other key times, is that really going on? Is that a key part of your life? Is that... Uh, uh, an aspect that just keeps you going moment by moment? Or is that just here or there more rare than it is regular? That's a very important question for us. And you'd say, Pastor, I realize that I'm letting circumstances get me. I'm allowing myself to fall into different traps of not fully being yielded, though I want to be. But the joy of the Lord isn't my strength as it ought to be. I'm too much affected by what's going on. And I realize it's a choice, and though <laughs> even maybe you feel under pressure right now, just negatively in your life, you're going to say, I'm going to obey God. He has told me uh, to be joyful and to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And I'm going to make that decision. I need God to teach me. I want to grow. I want to be in line with His will but I realize this is important for me and for others. Would you pray for me? I, I raised my hand gladly that I was saved, but I want to raise it now that I want to have the joy of my salvation on a regular basis. Would you slip your hand up if God has worked in your heart that way? God bless you. Appreciate so many hands. Thank you. That's great. How many here would say, Pastor, I couldn't raise my hand with any certainty about salvation? And there's an ache in my heart. If I were to die, I don't know for sure. I would hope so, but... When you say no for sure, I could not answer that. I've been trusting some other things, or maybe you feel like you couldn't get saved. I don't know what it is, but my friend, all, whosoever will may come, Jesus says. He wants all of us to come to Him. He died for all of us. And if you're here today and uncertain about salvation, no one's looking around. I'm not going to point you out, but I would encourage you right now to let the Lord know by being willing to raise your hand and let me know so I can pray for you and at least take that step to the Lord here today, admitting that you're not certain about your salvation. Is there anyone like that? Just slip up your hand till I can see it. Yes, God bless you. Amen. Anyone else? I, God's working in my heart, Pastor Van Gelderen. Would you please pray for me? I need to, this is too important to bypass right now. I know God's touching my heart. 
anyone else God's working in your life here today. Lord, would you work in these moments together? We thank you for the simple truth as we've looked at a number of verses here, just a simple overview. But Lord, it's a reality. It's an important one. The joy of the Lord is part of our inheritance. Lord, thank you for giving us the Spirit of God and the joy of the Lord. Now, Lord, these believers that are here that are allowing other things to take away their joy, identify that. Help them to bow before you. And Lord, may they make the strong, faith-filled determination, depending on you, to have your joy on a regular basis. Give them great victory. For this one here and others that need to come to you as Savior, would you work mightily, make it clear, would you give great victory, even today in this matter, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand prayerfully. In just a moment, I'm going to have the piano play an invitation hymn. And uh, friend, if you're here and not certain about salvation, I would encourage you just to step out. The pastors will be here. We'll have someone to help you uh, with just getting it settled. Being in this church does not save. It's trusting Jesus that causes you to come to a place of knowing Christ as Savior. And uh, we'd love to show you from the Word of God what that means. So uh, just come, and it would be our joy to help you today. Don't, don't wait on that. Christian, if God convicted you, why don't you take a stand? I'm going to be joyful. Isn't that such a tough thing? I'm going to be joyful. That's a great thing to decide, but it's an important one. And if God's worked in your heart, you come now as the piano plays. Oh, if God's working in your heart, friend, let God have his way here this morning. Friend, if you need the Savior, we want to we want to help you this morning. certain about salvation, please let these men know that you would like to have that matter settled and they'll have someone help you. seated. I believe there's a baptism this morning. So, Brother Mueller, if you'll come and lead in the hymn here at this time, please. Take our hymn books here this morning and turn to 472 as we consider the theme of the joy of the Lord that we were just challenged about. That joy is the joy of a relationship with the Lord, of walking with him, and that's really how we can have that joy. So, we're going to sing together Heavenly Sunlight 472. And Walking in sunlight all of my journey.
We have one here to be baptized this morning. Jim Hensel was saved on May 15th, just a few weeks ago. And I remember when he let me know that, Jim Smith, uh, do you live near Jim? Is right across the street. Right across the street. Led his neighbor to the Lord and uh, has been discipling him. And Jim wanted to get this matter of baptism settled. Amen. And we're so thankful. Jim, are you glad you're saved? Yes, sir. Amen. That's wonderful. Put your hands together. In obedience to our Lord's command, and upon your profession of your faith in him as Savior, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. That's a blessing. We thank the Lord for Jim. Have you read off the cards there? Would you do that for me? We've got uh, uh, some folks here we want to let the folks know and then close in prayer. All right, one decision just to, to make public here. And Titus Jackson wanted to let everyone, in, let everyone know that uh, he got saved last Sunday afternoon. And so we praise the Lord for that. And we're excited about that, Titus. So thank you for letting us know. Let's uh, stand together and we'll pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the truth of your word that we've heard this morning. Lord, uh, I've been challenged. Lord, the need for joy in my life just every moment. And Lord, I want to walk in your joy. Would you just uh, give us your strength as we go from this place? And uh, Lord, would you enable us to truly live out this reality and we're looking to you for your joy we can't work it up and lord thank you for the encouragement we've had here this morning with this one being baptized and uh, titus being saved would you guide us now and bless each one that was here this morning we ask bring us back tonight we're ready to hear from you and continue to be challenged by your word in jesus name amen <laughs>